Amen. Bwana asifiwe. The silence is uh, scary. Praise the name of the Lord. And somebody cannot read my handwriting. <laughs> He's a great person. Ama namna gani? Eh? But I'm grateful that I passed the exams. I don't know how the lecture has led. <laughs> but somehow I passed. So, um, but I don't think they are very, very important. Uh, but maybe because uh, all of you are yearning to get there, uh, it would be important uh, for me to do it because he said that I will come and do it. So let me obey. So what he led first was uh, a Bachelor of Arts uh, in Economic and Business Studies, which I did in KU. Uh, between the year 2000 and 2004. Um, after that, I did my CPAs. I'm a certified public accountant, uh, and I'm an auditor by profession. And then I went to Africa International University, and I did a Master's of Arts in uh, Biblical Studies. And currently, I'm doing a Master's of Science um, at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, um, and a few other things, like Leo Inatosha. Hatewe. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, but I have also been allowed for a little bit longer than, than you, so you will get there. Yeah, you can see that when I was getting to KU, some of you are being born. Eh? Some of you are born in 2000, isn't it? Or, or even after, or slightly before. So some of us are a little bit old, uh, and therefore you will also get there. Na hakuna haraka. Um, and I'm married to Mary Gadoni. And we are blessed with uh, three children. Our firstborn is currently in high school. Our secondborn is in grade three. And the lastborn is in pre-group. Uh, I, I like the way you, you laugh. <laughs> I hope you'll be here soon to give you a story. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, and I know today we are talking about relationships and dating. And, you know, uh, these guys who came here before. And you can give me a note and tell me when I'm supposed to finish. I'm a, a strict timekeeper, so I would want uh, to finish at exactly the time I'm supposed to finish. I like keeping time. That is why at 7 a.m. I was already here, and I've always made sure I'm here at 7 a.m. Uh, to ensure that I join you, and I also enjoy your praise and worship. They do a great job. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm so delighted to be here, and I know that we are going to be blessed. So, um, we are talking about Dating and relationships and dating. Oh, I had opened uh, the purpose of marriage. Yeah, I'm, I'll be speaking this afternoon in a couple's meeting, so I think that's why uh, that was what was on top of my uh, uh, iPad. And I, I think we've been told enough, uh, so I've come to summarize in a, in a few minutes. Eh? Yeah, it's actually a few minutes, so uh, I'll summarize this very well. But I'm, I'm wondering whether I should start by asking what the status is so that I'm able to know how to address you, so that I ask all those who are in relationships to start, all those who are yearning to get into relationship to also stand, those who have been left before Valentine to also start, and after they start, then I'll be able to see what direction my sermon takes. That sounds like a good starting phrase. Right? <laughs> uh, I, I can see how some of you really don't want it to go that direction. Um, but wherever you are, you are a child of God. You, you are loved by God. You are created in his image. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if he left you, if she left you, they just don't know what they just dropped. Yeah, they, they just, they have no idea. They have no idea of what they just lost. And someone is just about to get something precious and something great. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us take heart. Let us be encouraged. Um, even if on Monday nobody has booked you, uh, please, it, it, it can be a beautiful day for prayer and, and fasting. And um, our sister has already given us a prayer item. Um, and, and, and I want I want us to pray seriously. You know, uh, before I before I left KU, around 2001, uh, we started a project to build a chapel for the Christian Union. And uh, 22 years later, we are still on it. So if if we sacrifice on Monday and pray and fast, 
because I don't want this project to go for 22 years. And the only way to do it is on Monday, if you're not being taken out, pray and fast for us to get a good place of worship. Hallelujah. That sounds like a good idea, eh? <laughs> Thank you very much. So we are talking about relationships and dating. So they never told me what kind of relationships they want me to talk about, whether it's business relationships, um, whether it's family relationships. Uh, but I assumed, um, based on the timing, that it must be this relationship that trouble you at around this time so much. And uh, the moment they included dating, although those who came before said that we should not be dating as Christians. Come on, manini. That we should not date. We should. It is not wrong. Even if it is not prohibited in the Bible, Yeah, but, but we bless the Lord for them. So I assumed what they wanted me to speak, speak about. And so I decided to uh, speak about relationships uh, that uh, lead to marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. And um, I was told this is a topic of interest, so I hope I am not going to disappoint. You know, your secretary would call me after every few days to ask me, They do they do a great job. They do a great job in following us up and uh <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, so we are talking about uh, relationships and dating, and I was given quite a number of objectives to uh, look into, and I hope that um, as I go through these in terms of the way I have structured it, you'll be able to see and um, get what was needed, because I know there's a reason why they saw that it was important for us as believers to see that there's a difference between how the world treats and looks at relationship and dating, and how we ourselves, who are children of the kingdom, ought to, uh, to look at it, and then how can we represent Christ in our, in our relationships, in our dating, in our, personally I always prefer using the term courtship to dating, because dating has a connotation of trial and error, it has a connotation of picking and dropping, when we were in campus we would call it picology and dropology, and, um, and so courtship sounds a little bit serious, eh? It's good to sound serious in church. If this guy was too serious, I even wondered whether I'll be able to preach when I come here. Um, but I thank God for you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And, and, and what is God's ideal purpose for uh, a Christian uh, courtship and, and relationships? And is there room for people to be friends when they are courting, when they are in that relationship, or they just move? Praise the name of the Lord. I would like us to look at the Bible. Although these guys have read so many verses, uh, but allow me to also read a verse or two. Uh, first, we read Genesis 24. Are we together? Yes, nobody should be left behind. So, my Genesis 24, um, I would have wanted to read from verse 1 to 67. Yeah, that's what I've written here. But allow me to just read some few portions of it. Uh, if you're there, the Bible says that Abraham was now a very old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day, Abraham said to his eldest servant, note that he said this to his eldest servant. He did not give this assignment to anyone. It was given to the oldest servant, and there is a reason for that. The man in charge of his household, so it was a man who was in a place of authority. Take a note. By putting your hand under my thigh, swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. See how that is structured, you know. This word was written then. Um, it has its context then, but it has its meaning today. Praise the name of the Lord. And it has what it is saying today. We, we might not be doing what they were doing, I might not go looking for my oldest servant to go and get a wife for my son or a wife for my daughter, but there is a message it gets home in terms of how serious this matter was for Abraham. Praise the name of the Lord. This matter was serious. That I will not only said you, but you have to take a vow. And this vow, as you take it, 
your heart will be between my thighs. Don't imagine anything, but just see the seriousness of the matter. Praise the name of the Lord. And other than your heart being there, you are going to swear by the Lord our God that one thing you shall not do, you will not allow my son, praise the name of the Lord, that I am now an old man, I may not have enough reason, I might not be able to take so much action, but you will not allow my son to take a wife from these Canaanite uh, uh, women. Go instead to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and this gives you how seriously God takes marriage. How seriously God takes the relationship between a man and a woman that they may become one and start moving on that journey for which he desires that a divine purpose is fulfilled. I urge Abraham took it seriously. You and I must also take it seriously. It is the relationship that we establish at our age now. It is when we get into courtship that we start laying a foundation for that serious relationship that God wants us to get into. And you can read the whole of chapter 24 and see how it went. And the servant was even scared. What if I go and I find that th that woman is not willing to come and meet your son? Should I take your son and take your son? The, the father tells him, no, never take my son where we came from. Praise the name of the Lord. Tulitoka huko. Mungu walitoa huko. Hatuwezi kurudi. So the instructions are very clear. The desire for Abraham that Abraham has for his uh, son Isaac is very, very clear and we must take it as seriously as it is indicated here. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, we come across uh, uh, Joseph and Mary and uh, they are also in a relationship. Um, they are in courtship and they used to take it very seriously then that if you wanted to leave that relationship, it was seen as though you are divorcing. And when you read verse 18, the Bible says, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Several things there. Several things. That number one, Joseph knew how important it was to protect the sanctity of marriage. Not only when in the marriage, but also when in engagement. While in that relationship, he, he felt it was very important for me to protect the sanctity and the holiness of marriage even before getting into it. And because Joseph had no idea that this child was by the Holy Spirit, then he assumed Mary must have passed somewhere and done something that ought not to have been done. But, um, but again, he wanted to protect the honor of Mary, the person that he may have felt had done something wrong. And to protect her honor, he, he said, I will not disgrace her publicly, but I will quietly leave. I will live honorably and ensure that she remains respected. Praise the name of the Lord. It is very important for us as we think about relationships to not only look, be short-sighted to look at now, but to see where we want to go with those relationships and ask ourselves what manner of foundation do we want to lay for the relationships that uh, we want to build and for the marriages that we want to have. When people are in a relationship, there is always a desire to spend time together. There is a desire to check on one another. Often, there is, there is a desire to help each other in different things. I remember when I was at the university, um, I had a relationship. Of course, because I've realized you'll be getting too serious. Um, and, 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 and I would remember, there, there was always a desire. You want to ask me whether we got married? The beautiful thing with people who have the gift of discernment is that they can discern what you're thinking. 
even before you say it. So I can see some of you asking, when did you get married? No, we did not get married. You know, you see, Apple. There is a desire to help each other in so many tasks and so many things and trying to go out of your way. There is a nudge to show off your love uh, to your friends and to everybody who cares. There is a desire to give each other gifts and to be together. But as believers, as we have these desires and want to move forward, we must always remember who we are and what God has made us to become and ensure that even within our relationships, that is coming out. One of the things is that in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says that everything you do, whether in word or deed, must be done in the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And we have been read again, was it in Corinthians, where the Bible is saying that whatever we do, we must do it to the glory of? So if you're dating, if you're in courtship, if you're in a relationship, it must be done in the name of the Lord your God. You must ask yourself, how can I relate with this girl in the name of the Lord? That sounds so spiritual. How can I relate with this man in the name of the Lord? Is, is, is the way we are uh, speaking to each other being done in the name of the Lord? Would Jesus be proud to be associated with our communication? Would Jesus be, be proud to be associated with the way we treat each other? With the way we do things, when we go out. It must be done in the name of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says that now thanks be to God who leads us to a triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. It is a verse that I love. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know I have quoted it every time that I've come here. By the way, how many are meeting me for the first time? Idio ya kwanza. Inua vizuri niona. Idio mara yako ya kwanza kuniona hii dunia yote. Ah, yeah, there are a few people. History has been made. You have seen me for the first time. But I can see most of you have, have, have met me before. That, that um, God, through you, diffuses a fragrance of his knowledge, not when you are leading praise and worship, not when you're preaching, but every, everywhere, in the lecture rooms, he diffuses a fragrance of his knowledge. In the park, when you are out there with your girlfriend, when you are out there with your boyfriend, he diffuses a fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. And the, the thing with fragrances is that they cannot be hidden. If I have a fragrance on myself, ni pita karibu na wewe, utajua. Na kuna wanajua kaya mudhuru wa nayapa Nairobi. Wanasikiwe. You can tell. And, and, and the Bible is telling us that through us and down there for 15 and all the way I think to 16, 17, he says that we are an aroma of Christ. And the question that you must ask yourself as you go through relationships, as you entertain this girl that has made you die while you are still alive, or this young man who, when you see them, no, you, you don't remain at room temperature, then you must ensure that you are diffusing the fragrance of the, that people are knowing God through you. Go on and see few I was going through a book by, I, 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 maybe you know the Gadukus, um, they, they have a program they call 101 something, Romans 101 or something. And, and, and they were saying that our relationships are an opportunity for evangelism, are an opportunity to show off that our God reigns, our God sustains, our God establishes, our God saves. How can you, your relationship become a flagrance of spreading the flagrance of the knowledge of God everywhere? Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16, um, even you can start from 13, refers to us as both light and salt of the world. And therefore, we are the ones who give not only flavor, but we are also the ones who give vision. We are the ones who give direction. We are the ones who give focus. We are the ones who show the way. And how can we as believers show the way in our relationships and how we relate with those people that we love? When Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, in 1 Corinthians 6.19, he told them that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That body that gets those feelings, that body that feels that for that young man, for that young woman, is a temple of the Holy Spirit and needs to be kept and sustained 
as such, praise the name of the Lord. And when he is speaking to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 5.3, he tells them that amongst you, he doesn't tell them there should be no sexual sin. He tells them amongst you, there should not even be a hint of sexual immorality. Praise the name of the Lord. I am an auditor, and um, as auditors, there is something that we are taught. We are taught that you must be dependent. And they categorize independence in two categories. For those of uh, who are accountants, they may understand that there is independence of mind and there is independence of appearance. And when I think about the matters of faith, I think about that. That deep within your heart, within your mind, inside you, you must know that I'm walking in purity before God. You must know that I'm living a life that glorifies God. But there is also an opportunity that in appearance, when people see you, they must be able to tell that person is leading a life that glorifies God. He is exemplary. He is a role model. He is somebody we can follow. So there are things we will do, not because we don't know we are holy inside, but because we also want to be seen to be holy. And that is okay. One has secure. There is this guy, I don't know whether George or who it was, who was fighting for, uh, again, a slavery trade. Slavery trade. In slave trade, eh? You know I'm an accountant, eh? I deal with numbers, not words. Eh? So, he, he was saying that your faith is not private. Your faith is public. And so, the way you execute your faith is of public interest. And God is not only interested with your heart. You know those people who say that God looks at the heart. Yes, he looks at the heart, but he's not only interested in the heart. He's also interested in what happens outside. And that is why Jesus will tell you that let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Good works are not seen in the heart. And glorify your Father in heaven. You don't become a fragrance from deep. You, you become a fragrance by what people see. By what people hear from you. So the way you conduct yourself is of interest not only to God, but also to people allowed you. And therefore, there should be purity as people watch and see you. The world is watching you. There are some people who will believe in Christ simply by what they see in you. And I've always prayed that we'll get there. That during the days of the early church, many times they didn't have to go for crusades. They just needed to continue doing life and ministering. And people will come to them and ask, what must I do to be saved? Praise the name of the Lord. And I desire that we can conduct ourselves in such a manner in our classrooms. Or are they lecture halls? The classroom is more lecture hall. Hmm? The lecture hall. Uh, what I'm politically correct. So, the way you conduct yourself in your lecture halls, the way you conduct yourself in your hostels, the way, is, it, is, it, is it possible for someone to come and, and tell you, I've watched you for this number of years, and I'm asking, how can I receive what you have? Praise the name of the Lord. How, how can I get this treasure? I see the way you do things. I see the way you conduct yourself. Because God is interested in that. I, I see the way you will behave with your boyfriend and your girlfriend. I know you are relating with so and so, but I admire the way you guys live. I admire the way you guys walk. I admire, can I, can I know how I can get where you are? That is the desire of my heart, and I hope it becomes your desire too. Praise the name of the Lord. As we do this, I just want to uh, explore a few questions before I finish. And um, maybe we should begin with a definition. What are we talking about? Um, uh, when we are talking about these relationships. Um, what are we talking about? Because I said they never told me what relationships, so I assumed uh, what we are talking about, and I assumed that we are talking about a romantic relationship between a young man and a young woman who love each other. That is simple enough. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not a friendship. It is not um, 
a, a brother sister thing Th there is involvement of romantic love there is there's is, there is a feeling that there's something more special than this brother who loves the lord but i don't only love how you sing and devote yourself to god i feel like i want to love you for myself ama sio hivyo when when you get to such a relationship you are saying that i don't want to love you for god yani napenda tu wewe vile unajua kuna watu napenda tu vile wana worship si ndio kuna watu unapenda tu vile wanaishi maisha yao let's have a conversation nimeona nikihudhuria utakuwa serious na mtapata vitu so si tuonge eh so unapata ya kwamba huyu jamaa sasa humpedei tu wa sio Kiswahili ni dumu wacha nayo you you don't just love him for god you want to love him for god and say and this man is saying this girl really loves the lord i love the way she devotes herself to god i love the way she prays there are people you will just love the way they pray but you don't want them in your house yeah true story you you love the way they sing but you're not interested in having them or you don't have such people or there's somebody you love you love the way they just treat you like a brother the way they just treat you like a sister but nothing beyond that but now it goes to a point where you love this person for god and for self and you really feel like you want them in your what house or you want to be in their house or you want to, to have your own house inakuwa gani ni wewe unaenda ni yeye anakuja ama ni nyinyi mnaenda mahali you know that you, you know the african context has distorted the 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 the, 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 the um, marriage as god desired it the african context is the woman who leaves their people and goes to the man's people na na sidikisho mpaka na kitada bado watu wanasema kwa vitada eh anaambiwa kwetu umeto yani umetoka wacha kutembea hata mahali pa kulala hakuna you go but but you know the biblical um aspect of marriage is that a man shall leave and a woman shall leave and they will come together and become one so it is not the woman who leaves to go to the man it is the, the woman leaves the the man leaves and they come together that is that is the true position of marriage as the bible has it i can see the men are looking at me as if si last time nilikuja na nikawatetea ile siku tulikuwa tumevaa vitu nyeusi nyeusi bwana asifiwe Leo ni beside there's a guy we used to be in uh, campus with and if he today he would tell me that I look like a flower girl. So I thought if I'm coming to speak about love and relationships let me try to uh, spice up myself and feel good. Y you know the way you dress also makes you feel good and confident eh? Kuna venye unaweza faa ukienda kuhubiri ushindi wa kuhubiri ukose confidence. So dressing is key by the way even as you go out there dressing is is key the way you dress there's a way you dress you have no confidence. And also of course it impresses people. I know some of you are already impressed by my dressing. Now. We are talking about <laughs> the, the biblical view of marriage. Lakini si mnanipenda. Yeah? Sio sio kunipenda not loving me for yourself, loving me for God. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. The ile ile love ya God eh eh hiyo ingine hiyo ingine mtu mwingine atakuja. Uh, so the, the 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 posture is that that the man leaves and the woman leaves so that when you get married you don't always feel that this woman came yani she came and then anataka kujifanya kama ni yeye na nikikuja alikuja so everybody must leave question number one that you must ask yourself is why did or even get into a romantic relationship What is the objective of Christian courtship or what is the objective of young men and young women getting into relationships and this is a question that uh, every believer must be able to ask uh, themselves and it is the question that brings the greatest difference between how people in the secular world um, get into relationships and people who belong to the house of faith get into relationships and for me if you ask me there is only one reason only one reason why people should get into a romantic relationship and that is marriage wanasifiwe mm. sina mapoint makubwa makubwa yanatoka heaven niko na point simple 
inatoka heaven. It is marriage. Marriage must be the sole purpose of any romantic relationship. People in the world will get into relationships for various, various reasons. They'll get into relationships for sexual pleasure. They, they'll get into relationships because they feel lonely and they want to have someone to go out with. They, they'll get into relationships because there is peer pressure. You know, people are pushed. Kuna watu ambao, I remember when we were in campus, we would say that there are guys who rise up like a, a rhino. For the awaki, last year unajua mulifanya AGM na officials wakawagoka wale walikuwa. Wakitoka tu, unajua they were busy serving the Lord. And I love people who serve the Lord. Because I also served the Lord. They were busy serving the Lord. I don't know whether nowadays they have meetings till morning and all that. And all of a sudden, they have handed over. They are leaving campus and there is nobody inside them. And now, they start knocking. 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 We, would, we used to call it rising up like a rhino. You know, a rhino sleeps, sleeps. Then all of a sudden, he arises. Days have gone and rises and starts running. Before they realize, they are like, where, where am I running? So peer pressure. Peer pressure. That everybody allowed you is in a relationship. Everybody allowed, allow, around you seems to be dating. And now, what? No. Romantic relationship between brothers and sisters are supposed to be only for marriage. And if you don't intend to marry her, if you don't intend to get married to him or to marry him, I don't know which one is correct, you must treat them like Paul tells us in First Timothy chapter 5, verse 2. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, if you don't intend to marry her, and you don't intend to marry him, treat them like Paul tells you in uh, 1 Timothy 5.2. What does he say? Let's see. Treat older women as you are, you would your mother. And treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. And of course, vice versa. Question number two. When should one get into a relationship? When should you get into a relationship? Hmm? When? Yesterday? Or today? When I see fewer. And I know this is a big question. I know it's a huge question uh, among all young people. That what is the right time for me to get into a romantic relationship with a young man or a young woman? And there will be very many answers for this. Some will give age. Some will give feelings. Some will give whatever they, they want to give. But my answer is simple. You should only get into a relationship when you are ready. Ready to do what? Ready to marry. When I see fewer. Now, if you are getting into a romantic relationship and the sole purpose is marriage, so can you get into it when you have not determined that you really want to marry? You know, you know there are people, the Bible says there are people who have who are eunuchs who are only by choice. How many have chosen never to marry? <laughs> you know, they, they, they give the example of the, the birds in the cage. They say the birds outside the cage didn't want to get into the cage. And the birds in the cage <laughs> didn't, didn't want to get out of the cage. So uh, sometimes marriage can be that way. But marriage is beautiful. Praise the name of the Lord. It's beautiful. And I know some of you have read my book, which is in your library. I'm told it's one of the widely read you know when I came and uh, I was offering books for your library, so I have from the pastor's heart, I thought this, this looks very spiritual for these guys who really worship the Lord. There's achievers in Christ, this is now for these guys. Then I told them I'm not giving them. Then they told me, no, this is the most important. I'm not saying who told me. But they told me, he had, he had married, he had married, he had married, he had married. And I've come to realize that. So when I went to KU last Sunday, I told them I'm giving, you very, I'm giving them very many books on marriage because I realized you guys, how, how many have read Imperfect but Beautiful Husband? Let me see. You know what you need to do? 
Pia na zakuwa na jiwekelea hapa pia kwa kwenye mkono wa kwanza kwa kwenye sigo. Sigona sifiwe. It's there in your library. It, it really, it's, a, it's a book that uh, we wrote um, during our 15th anniversary, um, marriage, wedding anniversary. And it gives um, more of a story of our own marriage and lessons that we have picked along the way uh, with my wife. So we've been married now. I don't know whether it's 16 or 17 years. So you must be ready. So one, you have made a decision that you'll, you'll, be, you'll get married. And two, you are ready. And when I say ready, it doesn't mean you're marrying tomorrow. But I mean you have marriage in perspective. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the guys who came here before me said that dating and relationships, we, we as believers must not do trial and errors. Yakoba ni kujaribu hii kama, hii kama, hii kama no. You must be ready. So it's very, very important for us to check that, that unless we have marriage in perspective, we should never engage in uh, romantic relationships. We should never get uh, people's children uh, to a place where we have, you, you, know, you know when you get into a romantic relationship, there is a, a, a very big shift from the normal world. People who are in relationships don't live in the normal world. Especially before they get married. When they get married, that is when they come back to the normal world. The moment they get into relationships, they shift, they, they go to a certain world somewhere. Si mnajua mahali muko? Si mnajua mahali muko? Amuta sema na mnajua si... Si ni wapia ni kona designment. Unataka nianze kuwaonyesha wala wana relate? Ni waonyeshe? Eh? Yeah, so don't get someone's child from the normal world and you take them to a different world and you have no intention of getting them to marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. Another very key um, consideration uh, for courtship is readiness in terms of being able to carry the burden of the relationship. Because I always tell people that romantic relationships are heavy burdens that we carry. It demands a lot of emotional strength. It demands a lot of mental strength. It demands a lot of physical strength. And it demands a lot of time from you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so if you are struggling with your grades, you don't have even enough time to revise completely. If you are struggling with the responsibilities that you have, be careful before you put on your back another responsibility of a man who will demand emotional accommodation. Praise the name of the Lord. So, try to weigh, are you ready? Should I give priority to my grades first? And by the way, you will still get someone to marry even if you don't get them now. Even if you don't get into a relationship, while in campus, you will still get people to marry. Si yata haku ya campus ilifujika. Na sinirio wa badai. Na kama nike goja, si badu nike owa. I'm not indirecting to you. Now, wana si fiwe. So, priority is very key. That, and, 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 and when I say that romantic relationships are demanding, they are demanding. And they can weigh you down. They are more demanding than real marriage. They're more demanding than marriage. Emotionally, mentally, physically, and especially in terms of time. And what happens is that when you get into a relationship, when you're not ready, when you have not assessed your readiness, because Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 14, is it verse 28, says that no one building a tower does not sit down and count the cost. Praise the name of the Lord whether he has enough to complete it. Lest he start, and when he is not able to complete, people will pass by and point and say, look at that foolish guy. He started that which he cannot complete. That is what you must do before you get into a relationship. Count the costs. Why we have many relationships breaking, why we have many strained relationships, is because people never counted the cost. And the moment they got in there, they realized it's more demanding than they thought. And because it's more demanding than they thought, and they cannot give as much as they 
are required to give, then the other person gets agitated. And what happens? It becomes now more costly. They write you a text message overnight. You are in an exam room in the morning. You are looking at the exam paper. And instead of seeing the question, the diagram that they are saying, you are seeing the text message you send. It is becoming heavy and burdensome. Before you get into a relationship, counsel all of that. And I want to say, brothers and sisters, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be lashed in the name of the Lord. Don't be lashed. Nasi lazima wako atoke hapa muti suri. Tumekia muti suri. Mo? Mo? Mutuku? Wala nasifiwe. Si lazima atoke ha? Na hata kama atatoka hapa, si hata mukieda huko nji atakuweko tu. So don't be in a hurry. Don't burden yourself. Count the cost first. Be sure that you can carry that burden. It is a very heavy burden. So prioritization is a key concept. And you must be able to uh, uh, look into that. And it's always good to remember that you belong, you belong to God. And because you belong to God, my first sermon here a few semesters ago was on times and seasons. I don't know whether there was anybody here that day. I'm watching my mind about was there somebody here when I spoke about times and seasons? And there's a time and season for every, for everything. And the times and seasons for one person are different from the times and seasons for another person. And therefore, don't align your times and seasons with what another person is going through. It could be summer for one person. It could be winter for another person. Live your life. Understand what season you are in and what is required for that particular season. Where are you supposed to be sowing at that particular season? What are you supposed to be? Yes, it is seed time, but what, are, what seeds are you supposed to be sowing and where? So that you give each its attention. Praise the name of the Lord. How do you enter into a relationship? How, how do you enter? And, and I want to say so much, so many things here. I just want to say that if you desire and decide to get into a relationship with someone, please make it intentional, make it deliberate, and be clear. Don't behave in a manner to suggest, confusing everybody. Don't behave in a manner to, to suggest. If, if, if you want to get into a relationship with me, just be forthright. Wana sifiwe. Niambie tu, ile abacho unata. So that we start a journey that both of us know we are on. The Bible says that two cannot work together unless they Let us have an agreement. Don't behave in a manner to suggest. Don't give me some gifts that I'm confused. I don't know what they mean. So, if you desire to have a relationship with someone, be forthright. Speak to them. Walk in the light. The Bible says that we are men of the light. And maybe that is a message majorly for men. But even women nowadays, they go. The, the, the physical concert is done by the man. You know that physical concert? I, I don't know where, where, where this has come from, you know, that to me kubaliana to nawana, ni me data kwani ni me perekam vitu flani, to me abia ata pasta, na baru nataka to spend pesa to de mahali me pige magoti na me kutuge kuda. Ati, ati he he proposed, na ata harikuwa kwenu wakabia mpaka mama yako anakuwa. Sai kuaribia watu. That's a, it's like he has, he has just done it. So, so I was saying, this physical concert, I call it a concert, sorry, that's just me. It's done by men, but I know, even, I'm a woman, I was a pet, and I wonder who is a man, I'm a bro. And you know, oh, you're not supposed to. Divyo muliabiwa. So after nilitoka hapa kuongea na men, kuna mtu walikuja, haka waongeresha, haka wabia. 
kazi yenu ni kumezea na kuzimia na Yaani unaona ama hampendaki jamaa ha, hakuna place unaona huyu mtu mume fellowship na yeye mume sip na yeye mume da class unasikia sige 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 hate kumwa kumuita baba na nini kimuitisha school fees <laughs> Ladies hakuna ha, situation kama hiyo Eh Nyenye hamuonagi mu muli tuongeeni ukweli hamuonagi Oh mnaonaga wamekubali Bwana asifiwe. Na sasa mkiona mnafanya nini? Mna Mna hold hearts, mnasema I wish God would. Mna mnasema kama Paulo that I pray that his the eyes of it is that studying will be enlightened. <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Eh? Mnaomba macho ifunguliwe maana Hey, okay. <laughs> Huwezi hmm? mwabia ati kuna vile sawa kama mlifunzwa mlifunzwa okay question number four. how do you conduct your relationship i'm almost finishing eh ama dio inafikiri kama ninaanza a good preacher amali anamalizaga hivyo ili aitwe next time ili aitwe akuje part b how do you conduct your relationship and um there are a few things that I, I would like to bring out um, that are key factors to consider when you you now have got into that relationship. You have sought the Lord. He has opened the eyes of this gentleman. And um, <laughs> if you don't na alisha aenda inatendekaga inaendaga hivyo unapata mtu anakuambia many years later hmm? some of these i'm saying out of experience many years later unapata mtu anakuambia yani yani huko unaniona yani huko unaona vile nilikuwa na kuangaliaga hii na vile nilikuwa nakaaga sasa kama hukusema alafu ikajua aje bwana asifiwe The first thing that is a key pillar as you conduct your relationship is that there must be friendship. And I always say that you do not propose to strangers. There must be a friendship that has been established. Of course, there are people who talk about uh, love. Love. Who love? Me sitting here in Muranga. Go to Muranga. My father was born in Muranga. Love at first sight. There are people who talk about uh, things. But whether it is at first sight or at second or third or fourth or 1,000 there must be friendship praise the name of the lord because any romantic relationship can only be built on genuine friendship people who it is through friendship that people develop trust for one another it is through friendship that people become vulnerable they can open up they can they can speak you know there are people uh, there are people who get married but they are too official is the name of the lord and i always draw a triangle and i and i, and I say that um courtship takes the shape of a, a triangle triangle ni hii eh kuna tairi tatu eh hiyo ndio triangle so wewe uko hapa wewe unaitwa nani eh ah wewe uko hapa wewe unaitwa hivyo na wewe na yeye yako hapa anaitwa nani wadi mesema hiyo akoza alafu kata smile And then what you realize <laughs> is that this triangle goes this way. So when you are starting, the distance between where you are and where he or she is is longer. And as time goes in your relationship, and that is why marriage needs to be in perspective, as, as you grow, the distance is shortening. You can see that. So at the bottom here is when you are starting. So he axis, he inaitwa kwa nini hii axis hizi kwa hizi? Ni y. Hii ni y na hii ni x. So hii y is time. So triangle iko hapo katikati. Hii y ni time. Then wewe uko hapa kwa kona na yako hapa kwa kona. So as time goes, you get closer 
at the apex is where you get married. And there's always a danger of if, if, if the, as time goes, you're not moving with that triangle in terms of intimacy and closeness, so that by the time you're getting married, bado ni kaibu. Ama ikutane before. So it becomes very important. And what brings about that is, is that, that friendship that you have with one another. The second key consideration is your value system. What are the things that matter to you? What are your bare minimums in a relationship? If you don't share a, a similar value system, it is impossible for you to move together. Because Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says that two cannot walk together unless they agree. The Bible admonishes us that we should not be an equally yoked with non-believers in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. And therefore, what is your value system? Now, what informs your value system? My value system is informed by my relationship with God. There are some bare minimums as a believer I can never go below. There are certain things that are non-negotiables. And you must have those. And the tricky thing is that we have believers in church whose various systems are upside down. So you meet somebody who is born again, but for them sex before marriage is not something that is part of, you know, that, 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 that abstinence is not something that is part of their value system. I have several of you who are my friends and several others at Pokers. And I think there was what, chastity week. Am I telling you? Yes, I would see the statuses. They were all, you know, about that and meetings about that. What is your value system? What does this person believe in? And what do you believe in? Do they believe in hard work like you believe in hard work? Do they believe in in keeping time and accounting for time like you do. If, if you fight someone who doesn't hold the same value system as yours, you'll have trouble. If I relate with someone who doesn't value time, because I value time so much, and that is why if I come late to a meeting, then there must have been something terrible that happened. And you realize I'll never, if you invite me here, it has never happened where I got here late. I actually got here before half of all of you. Because that is something that I have time. Time for me is, is of essence. I have so many things that need to be done. The time is so limited. If I get somebody who will waste my time, what is your value system? And how do you ensure that that is upheld? The next thing is communication. There's somebody who says that communication is the oil that keeps the relationship running. And when the different parts of the relationships are not well lubricated, what happens is that there is conflict. And so communication is what keeps it going. And one of the things that I keep hearing from young people that I mentor, I mentor quite a number of young people, is there are issues of communication in relationships. One of the biggest complaints is that there will always be one person who says, unless I initiate a communication, atawahi ogea. Then kuna dugu anakuwaka na seasons sa silence. Then all of a sudden he goes silent for a week or a month. Then you kimuliza and say, ah, ni yuko na stress kidogo, sasa ni kasawa. Ama hizi bitu hazi watedeke yagi nyinyi? Eh? Hazi watedeke yagi nyinyi? Naona vile mna, you are very careful, you guys are very intelligent. As you know, if you say zina watedeke ya, utaniabia your relationship. Lakini si ni mzuri kuwa nae. Kwa nini mna ugopa? Si useme tu kwa nae. Nani ya kona relationship? Communication is very, very important. It is mutual. And it must not make one person feel like they are the ones who are laboring for the relationship. He, is, he or she is the one who is always moving things, making things happen. It is mutual. Both of you must be able to uh, communicate. The other thing that is very key is accountability. And accountability is a foreign term to very many young people. And many don't like it. But I want to say that from day one, from the day you tell a girl from the day you tell a boy, hey, a man, you love boys or men? Or you love men? <laughs> from day one, there must be a system of accountability. And a system of accountability can have different layers. 
And it is not only in terms of relationship. Even in terms of how you do your life, academics, your spiritual life. And the first, the bottom layer of accountability is peer-to-peer -peer accountability. Where me and my brother in the Christian Union and my sister in the Christian Union, we are accountable to each other. Praise the name of the Lord. And I remember when I was a student, we had a group of accountability. We, we were actually three. We, we are still together. We actually now added a few other couples and we became five couples and we formed a group called the Stewards. And we've been together from, I think the Stewards has been there from 2005, 2006 now. We continue together. We now even own land. We have now children. We have prayed together. Because there's that peer-to-peer -peer accountability. That the moment I see a girl, that was us. The moment I see a girl, and I feel like my feet are going towards that direction, although I was going this way, then I know who I'll go and tell. Peer-to-peer -peer accountability. That you have someone you can open your heart to. You have someone you can talk to. You have someone who can tell you, hapo siwezi kukuruhusu. You have someone who will hear, ulikuwa in a girl's hostel. Unajua kwa tu tulikuwa na ile route, tulikuwa tunaita 10 to 10 room. Kama huko ni nakuwaje. Kini huko ni waje ni nakaa huko nze. So if you are in a lady's hostel past 10, he can come confidently and ask you, what were you doing? And you must answer. And he will rebuke you. And you will accept the rebuke. Wana sikuwe. Do you have accountability amongst yourself? Is there a way I can behave with a girl outside the lecture hall? And someone comes to me and tells me, brother, hapo, nasiri. Very, very important. Or come and ask me, I have been seeing you with, is there accountability? The second level of accountability is mentor-mentee accountability. Where you have somebody who is working with you as a mentor. Somebody who is mentoring you. Someone who is parenting you in different areas of your life. And someone you are open to. So it's not like an official, you know, linear relationship. It's more of, you know, that circular. You are in a circle. You, this is someone you're vulnerable to. This is someone you talk to. I don't know whether you know uh, Reverend Peterson Wangombe. Reverend Peterson Wangombe became my mentor when he was um, the, the, the director of communications at Focus. And I remember I was a second year in 2001. And I went to Focus and we sat with him. And I told him, I would like you to be my mentor. And we started a mentorship journey then, 21 years ago. We are still together. He's still my mentor. And I got my wife. I introduced her to his wife. They also clicked very well. And now they are our mentor. Even in our marriage, in my ministry, both of us became pastors. And I remember even when I got my first girlfriend at the university, I went to him and told him this and this is happening. And he told me, go bring her. And I went and brought her to their house. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, because young people don't want accountability. They don't want to be asked questions. They don't want to come and be asked, how are you doing? What challenges are you going through? Where did you go last? What did you do when you went? Accountability is key. Don't walk alone. What are you it is very key. The next level of accountability is, 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 is your spiritual authority. Who, who is this person that you look up to for your spiritual nourishment? Of course, we are all here at the Christian Union, but I know we all have our spiritual authorities, people whom we look up to. And if tomorrow we want to marry, they are the ones we would go to and tell them this is what needs to happen. Do you have a spiritual authority that you account to? And then, of course, this is not finary, but it's, it's, it's somewhere, it's, it's family. We are accountable to family. We, in fact, they say that if you want to know a guy is serious with you, go to the house and introduce him. That's how he's cousin. You know, he's introduced to his cousin, his brother, his sister, his sister, his sister, his sister, his sister, his sister. So those are four, and there could be others, but those are four key levels of accountability. That as I eye this girl, as I eye this man, and as I pray and seek the Lord about her or about him, then there is somebody I can talk to about it. There is somebody I can talk to and tell him, Hi, kuna vile usingizi ya leo, haikushika vizuri kwa sababu ya aina hii. Wana sikuiwe. 
Final uh, on, on that point, key is timelines. Apa, no, 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 no. There is accountability, then there is boundaries. I'm trying to rush because my time. Boundaries. There must be clear, agreed boundaries beforehand. You can never conquer a temptation when you get there. And they said it here. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't buy an ambulance when the leg has already broken. You don't go to buy a fire engine when the fire is already. So if you need a fire engine, you are the one who knows how fiery you are. I'm pausing here to continue. And because you know how fiery you are, make plans of where the fire engine is. Lazima uweke karibu. Karibu. Agree on what boundaries. When I'm talking about firefight, what boundaries do you have? Are they agreed upon? If possible, are they documented? That we cannot meet in such and such a place. We cannot meet beyond this and that time. We cannot chat beyond this and this. We, because you know yourself. You know certain things that God does is because of our weakness. And you and I are weak. Praise the name of the Lord. That the reason why the children of Israel, the Bible says, there was a, a shorter route to Canaan. But God took them through the, the longer route. Why? So that they don't see war and retreat. The problem is not God getting them there. Through the, God would have got them there through the shorter route. God was able to fight the Philistines and make it possible for them to get there. But the problem is before God gets the victory for them, their weakness would already have taken over and they would have seen the war and retreated without even waiting for God to fight for them. So the reason they are taking the longer route is not because God is not able. It is because of their own human weakness. Praise the name of the Lord. And because of your own human weakness and my own human weakness, there are certain boundaries we put. Some simple ones like this you may not have heard before. Like we will not chat when neither of us or both of us are in bed. But both of us are in bed. The next point was if there is need to quit, then how do you quit? You quit like Joseph. Honorably. Yeah, you quit honorably. Ensuring that you don't disgrace. Don't disgrace the other person. Don't bring dishonor to the other person. Don't go talking bad things about him or her. When we get into relationships, we access a lot of private information about people. We get to know intimate things about them. Please, don't go speaking about those things out there. Don't disgrace your brother. Don't disgrace your sister, however hurt you are. If you're so hurt and you need help, please seek that help. Go for counseling. Ask for Pastor Waroi's number. He will help you get a little bit stronger. But sometimes he can also be very hard. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We are grateful that you've given us an opportunity to have these conversations. Conversations that are meant to build us and get us to where you want us to be. I pray for these brothers and sisters and commit them to you. Praying that, Lord, you will lead them on that path that you have desired for them. That you'll give them victory not only in uh, relationships, but in everything else that they do, as they serve you in their academics, in all the things that they desire, Lord, I pray that they will receive that which they desire from you. But more importantly, that in relationships you shall help them to uphold that which you desire that they uphold, holiness and sanctity, and that, Lord, they shall live for you. We thank you and we worship you for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Yes. Uh, we have learned. Tumefunzwa. And I hope that tumeelewa. Ndio? I cannot emphasize any further. Yes, I just hope that if you have settled somewhere in your heart and now 
to have more knowledge about these things of life. And sometimes you cannot escape. They are here with us. So we must be taught. We must learn. So for me, I just want to remind us of Trevor, of Trevor Week. We are beginning Trevor Week this coming Saturday, 19th of February. So we are waking up asubuhi for 30 for 30 a.m. in the morning we are meeting at the table tennis room Sindio, i hope to see all of us there i hope to see all of us there on 19th saturday ngina kuja kenya na kuja hii next saturday on uh, at 4 30 to meet at the table tennis room as we pray for our school and and for our community at large Sindio? yes uh Another thing is, I would just love to thank us who took part and shared your time to be with us yesterday. To Licheza, I know that you are very tired. I can see <laughs> I can see tired people. <laughs> yes, but I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I don't mean my choker, but we thank the Lord. We, we enjoy.